Where is Georgia in 2021? I put a poll up on Twitter earlier today, which sometimes I do heading into a show, and I want to pull it up right now. So here's what I put out there. You can vote in real time in your mind, whether you're driving around listening to the podcast or watching us on YouTube. I just said, Kirby Smart has not won a title at Georgia yet. That's a fact. And then I followed it up. And, and then here were the two options. Either he never will or he eventually will. What do you think about that? Georgia fans, I'm interested in your take, and you can put it in the comments if you want to. You can email me, whatever. And also, equally as interested am I in the takes of just the college football nation in general, because here's what I think I and a lot of you have come to realize. If you'll look around, and, and you'll just look around, whether it be Twitter, whether it be at, at the barbecue hut at lunch, whether it be wherever you are, at work, around the water cooler, I don't think that the average college football fan has ever had more opinion than they do now. You could attribute that to a myriad of different reasons, but but it all comes back to the central hub of an idea that everyone's got an opinion on everything now. That's not a bad thing. I think that we're allowed to do what we do for a living because of that very thing. So I love that, but I think it's really fun sometimes to juxtapose the ideology or mentality and opinions of a fan base and then go outside the four walls of that fan base and look at what the rest of the country thinks about a program. So Georgia football right now. I get a question in the inbox. We were about to record Late Kick Extra uh, last week sometime, I think it was, in the podcast form. And we do that Tuesday and Thursday morning, by the way. And someone asked, hey, Georgia in 2021, do you think they may be, from a national championship standpoint, in the same position that Florida was coming into this year, this past year, from an SEC East standpoint? And what they meant by that is, you know, we talked about it on this show. Florida, I kind of bought into the idea, as did many Florida fans, that it was a if not now, then when sort of mentality for Dan Mullen and the Gators. And they were coming in and like they, they knew they had a quarterback edge. They had a, a comparable enough roster, a competitive enough roster. The schedule turned their way. And so the basic line of thinking was, well, okay, if, if we don't get it done this year, if we don't beat Georgia and at least go to Atlanta this year, when are we ever going to do it? And they did it. So now the question from the submitter the other day was, okay, how about Georgia for a national title? Because now shoes on the other foot. Georgia's looking like a prime playoff contender. They've got JT Daniels. They've got plenty of weapons at wide receiver. They've recruited as well as anyone in America. You look at the roster, like, where are they going to be lacking? And it's a fair question. But then here was the follow-up. So should the mentality be, if Georgia doesn't win one this year, they're never going to win one? And I, listen, i got to be honest with you. Initially, I kind of scoffed at the idea. But then the more I floated it out there and the more I did, you know, my own unique market research, which usually consists of texting buddies I know who are in the fan base, I found out that this is a more widely held assumption than I ever thought it was. Because to be honest with you, I think it's kind of laughable. Uh, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not poo-pooing anyone's opinion. I'm just going to tell you why I fully disagree with that. So my answer to the question is absolutely not. No way 2021 is some do or die, make or break now or never situation for Georgia because of the answer to this question. And there are several answers to it. Let me ask you, now just picture a generic team going into a year. What does it take for that generic team to be a perennial contender? What does it take? 2021 and beyond. Let's talk 2021, I guess. What does it take? Well, you know that they've got to have a certain baseline of just roster talent. I think we can all agree, no matter what you think about Kirby Smart, the guy has assembled a championship roster. So we can go ahead and knock that pin down. We've already got that. You've got to be, I think, dynamic at quarterback, not necessarily to contend for the playoff, but to get in it and win it. You certainly have to be dynamic at quarterback. And if you look at who they've brought in right now, they've got JT Daniels. He will be their starter this year. Your opinion of him is your opinion of him. We've got plenty of time in spring and summer to talk about him. But at the very least, it's a nice piece of the puzzle that's been figured out there. But also you got Brock Vandergriff coming in. Now we're talking about the future. That's a five-star guy. You've got Gunnar Stockton currently committed for the 2022 class. That's another five-star guy. So not only do you have a current element in place that checks that dynamic quarterback box, you got two of them coming in. I mean, maybe they don't all stay on the roster over the next four years. That's not the way quarterbacks work these days, but you've got that box checked. What else do you need? Well, I think and I was being kind of conservative here, I think you need at least a B-plus game day coaching staff. They don't have to be able to grease board you to death. They don't have to be able to play call you to death. They do need to be at least B-plus, not to get through the SEC East, not to get into the playoff, but to win a championship. you got to have at least B-plus. And listen, I'm asking you, because I think they check all those boxes at Georgia, so I'm asking you, where do they fall short to the degree that right now 58.7% of you 
believe that literally if Kirby Smart and Georgia don't win a title this year, he never will. Because I can't really wrap my mind around that. There is a big gap, as we talked about last month, there's a very big gap between the word can't or cannot versus hasn't or have not. Georgia has not won a national championship under Kirby Smart yet, but to take the stretch, to take the leap, which is over a Grand Canyon, figuratively, as far as I'm concerned, to thinking that, well, since he hadn't done it already, he never will, is crazy to me. I know how hard it is to get there. Maybe, maybe they're learning how hard it is to get there. I get it. I remember you know, when Auburn got there in 2013, and they were 13 seconds away, and I was doing talk radio down in Columbus at the time, and all the callers said, oh, well, you know, it's only his first year. We'll get there again. Uh, no, you won't. They never did. Now, Georgia got there in 2017, smart second year. And uh, listen, I, I'm sure there is a lot of folks who think, well, don't worry, they'll have another shot. Well, they haven't so far. But man, he's, he's going into his seventh year right now. Let me hit you with something. I want you to think about this. The best coaches in America right now. Saban is in his own galaxy. So who else are we talking about? We're talking about Ryan Day. We're talking about Dabo Swinney. Kirby Smart, the guy, if you're watching on YouTube, that you see on your screen right now, Kirby Smart just finished his sixth year in Athens. I just want to do a little comparative analysis right quick. Because think about that guy at Clemson. Think about Dabo Swinney. Do you know what he was doing in his sixth year at Clemson? This is a guy who has racked up multiple titles now. Dabo Swinney, in his sixth year at Clemson, had not only yet to win a title, he was in the process of losing three games and going to something called the Russell Athletic Bowl. Okay, so that's what he was doing. So I'm sure I could have found uh, people a dime a dozen in the process who would have told me at the time, Dabo Swinney, not only has he not won a title, he can't win a title. One would have been true. The other, as it turns out, would have been total garbage. Uh, there's a big difference. So that, that whole can't versus hasn't, we need to be careful with that. Now, I understand we're not wagering money on this, but I'm a big, I'm a big fan of only letting things come out of your mouth that you're willing to back up with your wallet, especially when we're talking in the predictive tense and the future tense. So the Twitter poll, it ended up with about a 59 to 41 split of folks thinking he never will versus he hasn't yet. I understand that uh, 1,400 votes on my Twitter account, not exactly scientific, but I have found a lot of you guys are pretty honest on this. And here's what else I found. Now, this, I think, really um, probably blows me away more than anything. I got some Georgia buddies who are willing to, maybe not publicly, you know, if I Skyped them or Zoomed them in right now, they wouldn't do this, but they are willing to privately confide in me that they've started to have their doubts. And I don't get it. It's, I'm going to do the same thing with Miami later in the show. I have found that I am more confident in the future of certain programs out there than segments of their own fan bases. When we do the mood trackers, which we're going to do in a little while, not with Georgia tonight, but with Miami and Auburn, that's why we cut the 10% of the most optimistic and most pessimistic fans out of the equation. Not that you don't matter, but it's not giving us a true read of the middle-of-the-road average fan and what their mood is. So I got to think, man. I mean, we did the mood tracker with Georgia already. They're going to have several shots at this. I can't find a season anytime soon where they're going to enter it and they're not one of anywhere from the 6 to 12 teams annually that fit all the criteria that it takes to compete for a title. And then once you're in there, you know, it's like the blindfolded kid, you know, little Josh, Harris County Carver Middle School, and I walk in there and it's the last day of class and, you know, we're swinging at the pinata trying to get the candy well, if I swing once and I miss, I just keep swinging. I know it's in here somewhere. Uh, they wouldn't screw me out of the opportunity, so I'm blindfolded, but I keep swinging. Well, some programs only get to swing once every decade. You know, like Iowa State is gearing up for a playoff run this year. They get a big swing. But then that roster is going to be gutted, and it's going to be a little while for Iowa State. Washington a few years ago, they got their shot, but then they had to wait, and they hadn't been back. George is in the room every year. Georgia swings, they fall down, everyone laughs at them, they get right back up, they get to swing next year. So that's what Georgia is right now. And so to answer the question um, that I could have asked her in about two minutes, but answered it in about seven minutes, no. No, it's not do or die this year. I'm sure there'll be some warranted criticism maybe if they don't get it done this year, but I mean, you're telling me they go to the playoff or, or lose in the championship game again. What is that a failure? I guess to some, you know, if, if the benchmark is championship, I guess it's a failure. No, um, if you're selling your Georgia stock, let me, let me put it like this. I'll buy it. You, you have a market over here for Georgia stock. 